let's get this started. First of all, this is something I've never done before. Uh, it kind of is what it kind of isn't. It is because it's a review. It isn't because it's not from a recently released album or song. It's actually an album that came out, by the time I'm filming this, came out exactly 20 years ago. It is an album that, the album that defined my childhood. It's the album that got me into the music I listen to right now at the age of 22. It's everything that started it all for me. Come on over by Shania Twain. Now let me tell you something first of all. I have no complaints with this album whatsoever. If I were to give an album a perfect score, it'd be this one. There is not one bad song in the album. So what we're going to do is, obviously, we're going to review them even though I just said what I just said. So, we're going to go, there's two versions of the album. You got the country version and the pop slash international version. We're going to follow the track listing of the international version. Which starts off with, you're still the one. Which to me is a, I got my little nose by the way. It's a, a, a very timeless classic to me. Um, if I wanted to sing any Shania Twain song, honestly, as much as I love more the songs than this, it'd be this one, because to me, it's the easiest one to sing, because I ain't got the best pipes in the world. Uh, it, it's honestly because it's easy to catch on to, you know, it's catchy, it's, you, it sticks, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it, it, stroke, maybe? It sticks. Uh, when. Now, my favorite part of the song is where Shania's vocals and the background vocals just meet in the uh, pre-chorus. And uh, Shania, I believe at one point, said that this was her favorite song off of Come On Over. And I think it's easy to see why. Because, you know, not only is she a singer and a performer, slash a container, she's a songwriter. And as a songwriter, I believe... It's, like, the most important part is telling a story. And she details it, the lyrics in the song, so well, so beautifully. It tells a fantastic story. From this moment on, um, to me, is Shania's best vocal performance. Um, I obviously prefer the solo version, which is not the duet version, which is the country version. It's just, it's, it works so much better when it's just by herself, honestly. And, you know, uh, she said one time that uh, she had a lot of, you know, people telling her, telling her, you know, what this song means to them. One of them said, oh, you know, we, you know, play this a lot at our wedding. Or this one says, you know, I play this a lot when I was having my child and I was like you know I never thought of it that way that could also be another meaning to this song and honestly that's how I feel it's either it's a wedding classic and not only that it could also mean you're bringing someone into the world you know it's like you know you, you, you gotta think about it it's, it's a very clever way of thinking about it Black Eyes Blue Tears to me the, I say that a lot to me uh, the single that should have been, or, yeah, it's a, it's a should have been single. Obviously, with me saying that, it's my favorite non-single on the album. It's got such punchy, it's, it's so punchy, you know. It's got that rock and, mm, it's so good. I Won't Leave You Lonely, to I'm not going to do that again. Um, it's a song with such beautiful tones and such a beautiful production. I'm holding on to love to save my life. That was the final single for the album and that came out like two and a half years after the album came out. The album was so mega successful it had singles ranging from 1997 to 2000. 12 singles. This happened to be the final one and it really deserved better. It deserves such more, you know? 
It's got such an energetic production and the detailed lyrics are amazing. What I meant to say was the lyrics are detailed and also really amazing. Come on over. It is a bouncy song, a bouncy ode to the people that should own it in life. And when I found out it won a Grammy, I was like, really? Huh. But it was for a songwriting award, and I was still thinking, huh, really? But this is Shania Twain we're talking about. Everything she touches, boom. Gold. You've got a way. It is very underrated. Very underrated. It was nominated for a Grammy Award for Song of the Year. To me, that's actually one of my most surprising. It's one of the most surprising nominations I've ever heard of. His song really, I mean, it was pretty successful with Country. You know, it was a top 20 hit. It was pretty big on adult contemporary, but it wasn't big all together. You know, made the top 50. But they really don't go for charts, you know, most of the time. Well, half the time. It was, but I was like, cool. But it lost. I was like, well, damn. And honestly, if I were to give you a version to listen to, I'd get, I'd recommend both versions. But to me, I love the pop version the most. Whatever you do, don't. My favorite part altogether is the introduction and the chorus. Especially during the pop version. It's so lively so energetic it'd be amazing to hear live man I feel like a woman really what words are there to describe with that one these not even like the second it starts it's like it, it has to hardly begin for you to know okay this is man I feel like a woman that's how good the song is that's how instantly recognizable it is but yet it only reached number 23 I was like Really? This should have been like a top 10. And it won a great music. Love Gets Me Every Time, which is, which was the lead single for the album. And honestly, I think it was the perfect lead in for the album campaign. Yeah, you know, it's got country, it's got pop, and it's got a little bit of rock, which is exactly what the album has a good blend of. So I, I think it's a great way. It was a great way to start the long long campaign for the album. Don't Be Stupid, which is one of my favorites out of all the 16. It's it's got the punch and it's got the energy and I would love to hear it live. My personal favorite, my personal favorite, that don't impress me much. It is my favorite song on the album, my favorite song by Shania Twain, and my favorite video by Shania Twain. Honestly, that video should have been nominated for a Grammy. Actually, no, it should have won the Grammy for Best Music Video. And overall, my favorite version is the pop version. It's so dancey. It, it, it can get somebody going, you know. The country version is pretty good, too. I'm not going to lie. Honey, I'm Home. Even though this is a role in the place of a woman... I think I can relate to it as well because it's obviously about work. Everybody can relate to how they feel about work. The lyric, this job's a pain, it's so mundane, it sure don't stimulate my brain. Yep, that one sticks to me the most because that's exactly how I feel about my job. And speaking of the role being in the woman's shoes, that's what I like, you know, because you, you would get like you get the men going out there making the money while the woman, the wife, sits at home. You know. This time she role reverses and that that's how Shania Twain has rolled. You know, go to any man of mine. You know, that's another one. That's another good feminist song. Speaking of feminist songs, this one's a pretty good one, too. If you want to touch her, ask. It's, I think it's the black sheep of the album. You know, nobody really pays attention to it a whole lot. But I think 
personally, it is a perfect guide to knowing a woman. You know, which is, I think, what Shania's goal was for this song. And, you know, you don't automatically touch her. It's like, oh, hey. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. Don't do that. Why is... What's going on here? Is it kind of my finger? I don't know. And finally, Rock This Country. And when I was a kid and I played this album, Rock This Country and Man I Feel Like a Woman stuck to me the most instantly. It was one of the last singles for the album. I picked at number 30 on Country Radio. And Country Radio, what, what is your problem? I mean, really? It's so good. It's a song that would be great as an introduction to a concert. And a great finale to a concert. What is going on with the lighting or the camera? Really? It gets your adrenaline going. It gets everything going. It's energetic. It's, oh my gosh, I love it. Uh, I love it. 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 And with that, I'm pretty sure you would love it if I end the video. So. That's what I'm going to do. And by the way, it, uh, for anybody that is younger than 20, or anybody that's older than 20, if you've never heard this album, first of all, what's wrong with you? And two, you need to listen to it. So, oh, by the way, Team Gryffindor. <laughs>